attacks are spreading. Boston, Philadelphia, Maryland. It's all over the country. The authorities are now feeling that a terrorist group being responsible is becoming less and less likely. She says everyone's dead outside. Do you think that if we continue with the use of pesticides, that nature will revolt and destroy us as what happened in the movie The Happening? Probably not. But what will happen is that we could cause the death of count deaths of countless organisms, and if we aren't careful, ourselves. In her book Silent Spring, Rachel Carson tried to describe the horrible effects pesticide use has on nature and other living organisms. Nearly every chapter is a summation of all the harmless species harmed by pesticide use. Amongst the many organisms mentioned by Carson are birds, whose populations dropped as much as 90% in sprayed towns. These include robins, swallows, thrushes, warblers, hawks, owls, woodpeckers, and even the eagle, our national symbol. Water-dwelling organisms are not even spared from pesticides. Whether because of crop dusters or by runoff, pesticides find its way into water. Fish everywhere are floating belly up because of this careless spraying. In Carson's own words, pesticides were converting the water that sustains all life into rivers of death. But this is not too bad, right? So what if other species are killed as long as we are safe? Wrong. One of the biggest mistakes made when using pesticides is believing that you are in control and are safe. Humans are just as susceptible to death by pesticides as an ant is. As we use pesticides or consume them on our food, we are storing them permanently in our body, and as we continue to consume them, more and more are stored. One of these, one of the most harmful of these effects is the effects that occur on the liver. The reason why we are less susceptible to pesticides than other species is because of the liver. These stored pesticides damage the liver and we could become more susceptible to them. Then, once we are weakened by the effects of pesticides, the real damage takes place. The pesticides affect us at our most basic level, the cell. To put it more specifically, the mitochondrion. The pesticides cause the mitochondrion to stop producing usable energy for the cells. This causes cells to stop splitting, oxidizing, among other processes. This is why pesticides cause not only death, but it also hinders reproduction. Pesticides also cause one of the most infamous diseases that still plagues us today, cancer. When looking at all the horrible effects of pesticides, it doesn't seem worth it, does it? And with so many different and even more effective alternatives, it doesn't make sense that we are still using them. This is what Carson pleads at the end of her book. There are so many different alternatives we could utilize. For insects, we could easily introduce a natural predator into the environment to eradicate them in a way that is natural. We could also sterilize a number of insects and release them so they are, that they can compete with the non-sterilized insects and eventually they would all die out. For agriculture, there are already numerous organic substances that we could use to protect them as well that don't hurt the environment. All of these practices were found to be more effective with pesticide use. So why would anyone still want to use pesticides? pesticides? The answer is with money. Today, pesticide companies are still fighting to survive so that they can make more profit, despite the knowledge of the harm to our environment they, that they are causing. In fact, Germany has already tried to kill a ban on pesticides that is widely known to kill entire populations of bees. Most of the concern today revolves around the pesticide use effects on bees. Even in America, our honey bee populations have been reduced by thirds since, by thirds since 2006 because of pesticide use. Although, although we have barely enough bees to pollinate anymore, the U.S. still protects pesticide producer profits. The U.S. government seems to be ignoring their effects on bees. In fact, they outright deny it. Einstein once said that if all the world's bees were to die out, then the human race would soon follow. We need to follow the advice of Rachel Carson so that in our quest to control the environment through the spread of death, we don't end up killing ourselves instead.